Hi guys, Neil at Italia Autos here. Hope you're all doing well. This week we have an, a bath in the workshop. We're going to get it on the ramp and check it out and see how it's doing. So this is an earlier bath, which is one of my favourites. It's definitely in the best colour. I think it's absolutely amazing. The pearl that comes off that white is absolutely spectacular. And I do definitely think it's probably one of the best colours to have on a bath. Also really a big fan of these style, uh, I think the Turismo wheels. And I think they look perfect on the car, along with the, uh, the nice little red side stripe and red wing mirrors. Now, there's not really much to say about this car because it is holding up really well indeed. I mean, it's got four good alloy wheels on it. There's barely a mark on the bodywork. A few little extra stickers and extra little pins and badges, which seem to be something that the bath community loves to do. But yeah, the exterior, from what I can tell, is pretty much original and unmarked. Let's have a look on the inside now. Beautiful red leather interior, again, holding up well. Not many marks or creases or cracks or anything on there. A little bit of wear on the driver's seat, but that is about it. The pearl paint colour is also continued inside along the uh, dashboard panel. For a small car, they are reasonably roomy inside. For a guy who's um, six foot one and um, ever so plump, um, you know, I fit in it okay. Yet I'm a bit close to the, the door here. Um, but you know, it's not a bad place to be. So I've owned two of them over the years and I really enjoy driving them. They're a very, very underrated car. So I do love them to pieces. The car's got an upgraded stereo in it, which a vehicle of this age does need. And it's a nice little uh, doubled in Pioneer. As it's an early one, you do get sort of the uh, LED matrix sort of dash. Um, it is much nicer in the facelift cars where you've got the digital speedo. That is a, a nice thing to have. Steering wheel's really fun, flat bottom steering wheel. Feel it, it feels really nice to hold in the hand. And of course the engine and the exhaust are some of the best sounds you can get out of a little hot hatch. So onto the engine, <coughs> you've heard it, it runs sweet. It's actually in today for a cam belt. I'm not gonna be filming that, but I'm gonna get it on the ramp and give it a good check over next. But as I said in the last videos, there really isn't much room in these engine bays to work on anything. You do have to take, you know, quite a bit off to get to uh, certain things. I mean, the cam belt, you just got to take the engine cover off. You've got to take the intake pipe off. You've got to take the water bottle off. You've got to take the, the engine mount off just to uh, actually get to the cam belt. And um, I've heard it's great fun changing the, uh, the side light bulbs. Very much of a pain these can be to work on. They are such a joy to drive. I mean, I really love them. As I said earlier, I've had two. And I've even been looking on an Auto Trader looking for a version like this just to have for a weekend toy. Um, which means I'm going to have way too many cars, so that means something's going to have to go. But um, yeah, trying to resist, but it is difficult. I'm on Auto Trader every morning having a look to see what bargains are out there. But uh, yeah, I'm resisting so far. Let's get it on the ramp now and uh, see what it's like underneath. Now onto the underside. I'm going to be looking at everything through my camera lens. So if I do miss something, um, please forgive me. Um, wishbones. CV gaiters, anti-roll bar links, visual inspection looks okay. The shocker looks okay, a little bit of rust on the bottom of it, or well, that's probably mostly dirt to be honest. Um, rust wise, there's very little there at all. The front subframe has very little rust on it, a little bit there on the exhaust mounting point and a few rusty bolts, but other than that, it is in tip top condition. We've got no oil leaks. The sump plug looks as though it could do with changing. It is a little bit rounded, so uh, when it's next in for a service, I'd recommend it has a new sump plug fitted as well as the washer. All up the back of the engine. You can see the gear levers there, gear lever cables, starter motor. It's all clean and tidy. No oil leaks to be seen. I mean, this is a probably a 10-year-old car. I don't know what date it is. It's because it's got a private plate on it. Front brakes, they have got a little bit of a lip on them. See if I can see the pads from here. No, I can't see the pads at the minute, but the wheel has got to come off. This side's got a little bit of a lip as well. So probably by the time the next time the pads are due to be changed, it will want some discs as well. 
But as this is an earlier bath, it doesn't have the big fancy brakes on it, so they are not as expensive to change as the Competizione versions. Um, right, onto the sills now. You can see it's had some small jacks used to it and it's bent the sills a little bit, but there's no rust or anything there, so you know, it's okay for how old the car is. Exhaust hangers are starting to uh, corrode quite a bit, so it's probably not going to be long until this starts snapping off and zangling around a bit. Floor pan has zero rust on it. You know, it, it's not like the uh, Fiat's of yesterday where they uh, rusted as soon as they left the factory. A little bit of rust coming on the back here, which mainly on the sort of the where stone chips and stuff hit, so we'll probably tell the customer to uh, get that treated before it gets any worse. Tiny bit of rust coming on that part of the sill there. And again, with all the Fiat 500s and the baths, we have rear subframe rusting. I mean, they're a big chunky bit of kit, so they're not gonna really snap on you or anything like that. But many years down the line, you're probably gonna be start seeing problems with subframes needing to be replaced. We've got a, it's not aftermarket, but an original LaBarth upgrade exhaust on it with the flaps that open. And I can see straight away we've got a cable tie here, so it's been wired open and the spring has been removed. So um, it gives a permanent nice sound. A little bit overkill on the exhaust paste here, so it's probably uh, had a bit of a leak at some point. E-back uh, lowering springs on the car. Rear discs look okay. Not much of a lip at all. All the tyres are in good condition, there's nothing to report there. No broken springs, no sign of leaking on the shocks. Oh, I'll tell a lie, this one probably, yeah. We've got a leaking shock here, look, so we're gonna want a pair of shockers on the back of this one again. The baths do go through rear shockers at an amazing rate, but they're not expensive to change, so it's nothing to worry about if uh, yours is going. And I have done a video, I will pop in the description on how to change them, so they're not difficult. It's a 10 minute job to change each side. Let's have a look underneath the wheel arches now and see if we can see any issues there. We do have some rust coming there where all the crap sits, so that is definitely gonna want checking out further and cleaning up. But as you can see, that happens. It's purely for the fact, if you can see it, the amount of stuff which rests there. So maybe it might be a good idea on your cars at home, just jack it up once every few months and just clean all the crap off there and give it some rust protection. A few minor, we're talking really minor little bits of rust coming through under the arches. Shocker looks okay and spring looks okay. Onto the rear, nothing much to really report on the rear. No rust or anything on the arches. All the arch liners are sitting perfectly right and all the bolts appear to be in there so it's not going to vibrate around anywhere. Alloy wheels are in good condition. So now that these center caps do suffer from corroding and they're quite expensive to get hold of. There's a few little bits of touch ups on the side skirts here. Again, the other rear arch is perfectly fine. I have taken the front cover off because I'm gonna be doing the cam belt in a minute. Again, you've got a lot of build-up of crap on top of there. The rest of the arch is perfectly fine and the suspension is perfectly fine. So that was a quick look over this customer's bath. If you want to see more videos on the bath, please give me a call and book your car in for some work and I'll gladly uh, get it on the ramp and uh, film some videos on it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you can give that video a like for me and I shall see you in the next video.